Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode we are getting stuck back into the transmission tunnel. Alright, those of you watching last week will have seen that I got the uh, the basic shape of my tunnel in place and sitting in where I want it to go, but I need to get the engine back out again so that I can finish making the whole mounting area and get it actually into the car. So. Let's get the engine out again. Okay, so now we can get stuck into things. You can see here these plates that I welded in last week that uh, hold, they're gonna be the mounting points for my tunnel. And I need to make these plates go all the way around the edge of the tunnel so that I can actually bolt everything on. Now I want to weld them on and make them all super solid because that's gonna add a lot of structure to the car. Now, uh, there are a few people who are really concerned about the strength of a removable tunnel, and if you try to drive it with the tunnel out, it would be very weak. But because I am going through and reinforcing it all, and I'll put a bunch of bolt points on it that'll be bolted up tight, um, it's not really going to be, by reinforcing it and having the bolted in tunnel, it's gonna make it quite strong. The original tunnel's only spot welded in every, you know, 300 mil or whatever. So those spot welds are all that's holding it. This is actually bolted in. Okay, yes, it is removable, but while it is in there, and as long as it's all lined up, that still adds to the structure of the vehicle. So before I can finish making these plates go all the way around, what I need to do is I'm actually having a little bit of interference. You can see here on the firewall, this part of the firewall, the, uh, the banks of the V8 are offset slightly, obviously because uh, of the way the crank is set up. You have the, the, the conrods are staggered, so the banks are staggered, if that makes any sense. So this bank sits further back than this bank, so this is where it's actually interfering with the firewall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this out and just drop it back to the level that uh, this little recess is. Just make a nice, neat little recess, and then I can box it in and finish up the firewall. Okay, so the easiest way to make a patch for this to sit in the direction I want was to just cut out the bit of the firewall, hammer it flat, and remake it into the shape I want. So now this is following roughly what is already here, and the patch is quite a good fit. It's, uh, it needs a little bit of trimming, and I've got to do a little bit more uh, panel beading on this little section here just to get it nice and neat and tidy, but that should go in quite nicely and um, make my repair quick and simple. All right, that is nice and clearance, and it fits in all nice and neatly. It looks like it's supposed to be part of the firewall now. So we can leave that, and let's go back over and have another look at that tunnel piece. Okay, so I've got my tunnel here. I want to add a little bit extra strength to this uh, to this sheet metal piece and also make it look a bit cooler. So I've got the bead roll out and I just want to run a quick bead where I've marked here along these edges on either side just 
it'll make it look better and uh, hopefully give it a bit a bit more structure. It's definitely going to warp it a little bit when I do it, but I hope that I can get it back to shape and get it fitting just the way I want it. Okay, so I've added my bead all the way around my tunnel. I stopped at the creases uh, through the center just because of the, uh, the extra stress on the metal there, but I think it still works okay with the design. I think it looks good. So let's get back to the car and keep trying to make this fit and make it a removable panel. So you can see here, I've just tacked in all of these pieces. It's a little bit uh, all over the place at the moment, but there is method to my madness. Uh, basically what I've done here is I've made my framework so that that is my bolting flange for my tunnel piece. And now what I've got to do is go through and um, as you can see here, I had to trim this a lot to actually get it to, to meet the same angle as the tunnel. I'm going to go through now, weld it all up, and then I can go around and actually start putting some fasteners in and fastening the tunnel to my flange. So now you can see that this is looking pretty good in this end. I've uh, cleaned it all up and ground it all back. It's looking good. Let's go and have a look from the inside. Now in here with the cover on, it's still not sitting super tight. I need to go around and actually get it to sit a little bit tighter, which might mean trimming some of these edges just slightly and let's get it to sit in the exact right spot. Okay, so I've still been finessing the bolt points and the screwing the uh, panel in and out and getting this flange at the exact right angle. 
But what I'm going to do now is clean up this edge along here where I've MIG welded. I'm just going to run over the top of it with a TIG so I can just melt it all in nicely and hopefully it makes that nice and smooth. All right, the TIG did a great job of cleaning up all those welds. It's nice and neat and tidy now, and I finished screwing it all in with uh, some metal self-tapping screws. It is, it is a rock solid uh, unit now, um, looking really good. The last thing I want to do is go through and obviously remove all those self-tappers, and I've just got some nice little screw head bolts to go into it. I've actually been paying a bit more attention about what I'm doing now, and I've been soaking all the nuts that I want to weld onto the bottom of this in some vinegar. So basically it's taken all the zinc off of the outside because when you weld zinc coated nuts, it, um, it's really, it puts on toxic fumes, it's really bad for you, and I, I haven't been doing it for a long time. Um, I didn't really know, but you should not weld zinc coated or galvanized nuts, but uh, just some white vinegar from the kitchen. I've left it in here for a day or so, and uh, all the zinc coating, you can see that they've gone dull and all the zinc coatings come off. So um, much safer for your health, so uh, make sure you do that if you're gonna weld in some captive nuts, which is exactly what I'm gonna do right now. So the tunnel is good. So the last thing I'm gonna tackle uh, today is these bits here. People were asking about these and saying what they are and can I cut them off and move them somewhere else. These are the upper suspension mounts. So no, I cannot cut them off. But this flange that sits over the top of either side, that is uh, taking up valuable engine bay space. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna trim that off and, uh, and weld it up so that I have a bit more room. That was a lot of work. <laughs> Getting that tunnel built uh, nice and neat so it'll bolt in, it fits in nicely. Bolt in, bolt it out. It's got lots of strength there and lots of structure. I've gone through and also welded up those, uh, those two mounts on either side. I will go through when I take the suspension back off again and I'll weld it from the inside as well just to doubly make sure. And I tigged it just to uh, um, make sure. I just, I, I like the penetration of the TIG better. The MIG always seems to send just too much metal at it as opposed to using the TIG, particularly from the top, I can sort of melt it in deep and, uh, and get that penetration that I want. Anyway, that is all the time I have today, so that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, the Alfetta saloon that we talked about last week was the basis for a new Fastback Coupe released in 1974. The Alfetta GT, designed by Giorgetto Giugiaro, took a lot of its cues from the Montreal supercar, but these were translated down for a simpler, more marketable vehicle. This car originally ran with a 1.8 four-cylinder, but in 1976, when the 105 series was phased out, the GT got a 1.6 litre, and the GTV was released with a 2 litre. In 1979, Auto Delta released a 2 litre model named the Turbo Delta. Only 400 of these were made for FIA Group 4 homologation using a KKK turbo, and they made 175 horsepower. The turbo deltas were actually the very first Italian petrol production cars with turbochargers. Yes. Okay, I'm finally getting feeling back in my legs. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good week. I, um, it didn't feel like I did a lot from last week because I started that tunnel then, but getting it all nice and neat and tidy and finished, I think is, uh, 
Um, it's time for me. It's worth spending that time now so that it's just it's just really neat when it's done. My plan is when this car's finished to be just a really really crispy build. So uh, hopefully that's the case. We're getting there, but uh, chipping away at it slowly. Yeah, better to go slowly and do it properly, I think. That's right. Do it and too quickly, you end up doing it two or three times again. Anyway. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you would like to see us a day early, Please follow us on Patreon. Yep, help us out there. And uh, follow Mrs. Jeff on Instagram as well. Ah, yes. And, and myself. Uh, all right, guys. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> I'm praying. I'm <laughs> praying this will be over soon. Get out. <laughs> We've had cupboards, I've been car bowels and cars. This car originally ran 1.8 4 litre cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> And the GT5 V, v 